Well, good morning or good evening to you, uh, depending on where you're joining us from around the world. Uh, we welcome you to our presentation today. We're really excited to share some insights on a unique school within our group. Uh, today, we'll be presenting on Basis International and Bilingual School Chengdu, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share some insights with you about the school and uh, what we have going on there at the school. For the presentation today, we'll be covering uh, insights on the school. We'll then also touch on some of the insights about uh, the broader basis International Bilingual Schools Network. We'll, show, we'll, we'll share details about the, uh, the benefits and the expat package, as well as some insights on visa and requirements. And then lastly, we'll touch on Q&A. So you, as you have any questions uh, that come up along the way through the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A functionality within uh, the Zoom. Uh, down on the bottom menu, you should see Q&A, and you can type in your question there. We'll be answering all of the questions at the end of the presentation, and I uh, look forward to answering any questions that you do have. So today, um, uh, presenting today, my name is Tim Smith, and I'm the Vice President of Global Talent uh, for BASIS International Bilingual Schools. I'm joined today by Dr. Ryan Kelly, who's the founding head of school at BASIS International and Bilingual School Chengdu. And along with uh, Leila Oskui, who is the International Recruitment Team Lead and works uh, directly with our school there in Chengdu. So to start off and to introduce our school, Basis International and Bilingual School, um, uh, I won't take any uh, of the key details from you, uh, Dr. Kelly, but um, uh, really exciting. It's a very unique uh, school, which I'm sure you'll, you'll share about. So brief introduction, uh, Dr. Ryan Kelly is the founding head of school for BASIS and uh, BASIS International and Bilingual Schools there in Chengdu. So uh, Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. Really looking forward to uh, hearing some of your insights. Uh, this is the inaugural year of our new school in Chengdu and uh, uh, a lot of great things that you've been able to accomplish so far and will be looking to accomplish and some great things to share about those who will be looking to join us as we continue to grow and expand in Chengdu. So welcome and uh, looking forward to what you have to share about your school. Thank you, Tim. I really appreciate the introduction. Uh, before I dive into specifics on the school and, and things about that, I thought I'd give a little bit of a background on me. So on the professional standpoint, this is my 25th year in education. I started as a math and chemistry instructor and then moved into school leadership, and I've been involved with leading schools all over the United States. I've been with the BASIS Network for the past two years and moved to China two years ago and have just been uh, absolutely amazed at the experience. On the personal level, uh, my wife and I wanted the best for our two children, and we had always wanted to do an international uh, stint. And when this opportunity came along, it was just, it was too great to pass up. And so my son O'Neill is in grade three here at Basis Chengdu, and my daughter Kai is in kindergarten. And they both also attended Basis International School Shenzhen last year and just had a, a wonderful experience. So that's a little bit about me and my leadership. Um, this is my second headship. I was a head of school in the United States as well. And so I love being a head of school in the BASIS Network and just have found it an exhilarating experience. So a little bit about the school. Um, first uh, location, it's in the southern part of Chengdu, kind of in between like the third and fourth ring. If you if you understand Chengdu, it's a series of rings. You have the first inner ring, which is the city center, and it moves out from there. So we're about you know 40 minutes or so from the center of the city. The physical plant of the campus is something that is hard to put into words. Um, if you've seen the pictures, it is just a stunning and beautiful campus. But more than that, it is a community. And one of the visions I had when I was looking to hire people and open the school was, I really wanted to be a community of learners and not just the students. I wanted the staff and the parents operations team to all be part of that. I wanted us to all be focused on the most exceptional education for these students. And then we all partner together to make sure that, that those students have the best possible experience. And I'm pleased to say we have realized that vision, we're implementing that vision, and it is something that is just truly incredible. One of the unique things about our campus is we are the first to have both the international and the bilingual program. And essentially, the major difference between the two is on one side, you have the international where you'll have expats and you'll have 
local Chinese that have a uh, they have a passport from another country as well. So you have a mix of a variety of different backgrounds. And the bilingual side, it's generally going to be mainly uh, you know Chinese locals. But what I can tell you is the two programs are essentially the same. On the international side, it is 100% the basis curriculum. On the bilingual side, it is still 100% the basis curriculum, but we do infuse some of the national curriculum in there. Our teachers teach on both sides of the program, so you get that exposure to both programs. And the standards at which we hold to the admissions, to the quality of students is the exact same. So there's going to be no difference between what you see on both sides. There's going to be a few little nuances from a curriculum standpoint, but nothing that I would say our teachers really feel is dramatic or that it's going to be something that is going to be um, you know, different for your experience if you were to join Basis Chengdu. I think some of the other things that was really exciting about this school was just opening a brand new school. And so it was something that was exhilarating. This founding team is outstanding. And the one thing about this founding team is that they really are welcoming. So if you do join, you won't feel like, oh, okay, they're the founding team and I'm just a new person. No, you're part of our community. We will share our stories of what it was like to open a brand new school, but you'll be part of our greater community. And I think you'll be very welcomed um, into what I consider just a fantastic school and a fantastic faculty that are just doing an exceptional job. A little bit about the students. Uh, I want to spend a little bit more time on this that um, I want to reiterate that the international and bilingual programs, we at the admission standpoint, we look for the exact same type of student. It just happens to be a passport is the only difference between the two. And obviously there's going to be that curriculum that I mentioned. So the students that I've encountered in Chengdu are exceptional. The families are friendly. Uh, my team and I are outside every single morning welcoming families and welcoming students. And we have just found this to be one of the most welcoming communities of parents and students that we've ever seen. Every student that comes through has a smile on their face. They're happy. We have one student that literally gets out of the car and runs into the campus every single morning. And so it's something I think if you come here, you're going to discover that they are just a great group of kids eager to learn, eager to hear about your home country, eager to hear more about the world in general. And I, I, they are really focused on wanting the best international education that they can experience. And I think BASIS delivers that with no with no question at all. So it's just something I think that is going to be amazing if you do join BASIS Chengdu, that you will discover that these students are just so eager and their parents are so welcoming to all of you. So our teachers, uh, here's a few slides. I'm smiling because I, I mean, I know all of these teachers so well because all of them I've been interacting with for over a year, some of them a year and a half, because I began hiring for this particular campus last August of, geez, what is that, 2020, 2021, and it, it's just been, it's been an incredible journey. So the teachers are fantastic. Uh, they are a great group of team members that really are focused on having fun at school, but also delivering this incredible curriculum and ensuring these students are getting everything that they need. What you can see in these pictures is that we are a community. So if you want to join a team that is really focused on making sure that all the students are taken care of, the teachers are taken care of, that not only inside of school, but outside of school, that we work together, we play together, we socialize together, then this is the school for you because that is what we've done. We've started with, you know, when we started the school, as people arrived, we would do small get togethers. And then as more and more people arrive, we did larger get togethers, we do whole team get togethers, we do smaller group get togethers, we do divisional. And as you can see in some of these pictures, it's from our spirit day um, house competitions. Um, you can see some of the calligraphy. We do a lot. Uh, we partner a lot with the operation side and the Chinese department to make sure that we as expats and others are learning about the culture here in China. You can see some of the professional development we do and just the kind of the crazy fun stuff that uh, we do in our canteen. That's just, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Each day I come to school and have, uh, have it just, I, I have fun. It's, it's a great job and I really enjoy interacting with the teachers. The campus. So it is really hard to put into words what you will see when you step foot on this enormous campus. It's the first construction project 
that I've been part of that all of the beautiful renderings are actually what you see being built. A lot of times what happens in construction in the United States, my experience is that, you know, you, you'd start to value engineer as the budget got tight. But as you can see in the lower right hand corner, that rendering of that large campus, that is exactly what has been built. And that is exactly what you will see when you step on campus. It is it is absolutely gorgeous. The amenities are it's it's just really hard to explain. Our gym is enormous. We have a beautiful Olympic pool. We have a, a library that looks like Harry what came straight out of a Harry Potter movie. We have multiple lecture halls. We have classrooms that are just you know technology uh, supported you know, large, our hallways are gorgeous. And it's just a campus that you, if you are worried about getting your steps in, you will have no problem getting your 10,000 steps a day on this campus. And it is just something that, you know, when you step on it, I think you'll understand it. Um, that the picture in the upper right is walking into the administration building, which really houses our canteen, it has our gym, it has the pool, it has our Harry Potter library that's on the fifth floor, and it's just, it's it's a wonderful campus, and it's filled with a great group of teachers and operational team that are really just focused on working together and providing an exceptional education for the students. All uh, right, Chengdu. So I've been in Chengdu for just about a year and have found it to be a city that it really lives up to its reputation, which is the happiest city in China. It is something that I have found to be uh, an amazing experience to be here, um, from hot pot to the pandas to a variety of activities you can do outdoors or get to pretty quickly within the city. is it, it's, it's fantastic. For my apartment, I can get up and head down towards the river and go on a nice run along the river. So if you're active, if you want to do the outdoors, you can get to it so quickly. Uh, I, you know, My dean of high school is a big avid outdoor person, and so he can go go to the mountains every weekend and takes his family and sends beautiful pictures of the campsites that he finds. And so if you're looking for a city that has both the large city life that you can get to and that you want to also get out of the city and feel like that you're in, you know, in kind of the rural area of China, you, you absolutely can do it all. You're really close to a variety of, you know, historical cities. Xi'an is uh, about an hour and a half or so away by train. You know, you can go see the ter Terracotta Warriors there. That's something my family and I have done. Chongqing is very close. You can get to Tibet pretty quickly from Chengdu. And then obviously all the other cities within China is you just jump on, you know, you can go one of, to one of the two international airports we have here and be able to catch a flight pretty easily to anywhere in the world you'd like to go or within China. So it's just a city that I could talk all day on. Um, so if there's specific questions you have, please put that in the Q&A and I can certainly try to answer them, um, you know, in the subsequent uh, when we get to that. You can see some of the other areas within Chengdu and, you know, the, 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 the large Buddha that you see there is about an hour away from Chengdu and you can get to that pretty easily. And so you're going to be able to do a lot of different things within Chengdu. And I've lived in Shenzhen. I've visited a variety of other cities within China, and I've just found this particular city, one that my family and I are very happy in and one that we could see ourselves being at for a long time. So wonderful city. And, and I think you'll find it to, to be the same once you once you join the team. All right, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, Dr. Kelly, Kelly, thank you for uh, sharing some of those insights. Uh, Chengdu being the, the happiest city in China, uh, definitely somewhere that uh, you can feel comfortable landing. And um, the size of the campus, uh, uh, no concern getting the steps. And uh, maybe uh, we'll look forward to uh, uh, see if I can, I can set a record of walking the campus in the fewest steps. So uh, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to create a competition and, uh, and uh, I'll see if I can set that record. <laughs> Large steps. Well, great. Well, thanks for those insights. Um, I'm gonna share some insights on the broader uh, network of uh, Basis International Schools. And uh, Basis International Bilingual Schools is part of the Basis Curriculum Schools Network. So it's part of the schools. We do have um, six independent schools, uh, private schools in the United States along with 10 international schools. I'll have nine in China, including the two uh, new schools we'll be opening up next year, along with one school in Bangkok uh, in Thailand. Um, in terms of the mission, something that really stands out to us 
is, um, you know, baked within our mission, um, and you can see it there, is um, we actually do have faculty mentoring as one of the key components of our actual mission. Ryan had talked about, um, about having a community of learners and having uh, faculty continue to improve and learn themselves and enhancing their craft and everything else they do is actually part of our mission. So our mission is really providing that transformative education uh, through the basis curriculum, great teaching, met teacher mentoring, uh, looking to really produce graduates who have the broad intellectual capabilities, international perspectives, critical thinking proficiency, creative problem solving skills to be leaders in their future academic and professional lives. You know, something that I just really enjoy of having that uh, um, within all of basis schools, just that live intellectual curiosity within the schools and uh, focus on really developing our people that continues uh, as part of our mission. In terms of the curriculum, uh, something to be aware of, you know, the basis curriculum is uh, a bit more of an accelerated curriculum. And so um, it is accelerated, um, it's rigorous, um, um, we have phenomenal academic outcomes, but it really kind of starts in the younger grades where we establish that love of, of learning where the kids really, you know, you see that light going on inside them as they move more into um, upper uh, elementary, upper primary, and into the middle school grades, it's enhancing the academic mindset. We're building the critical thinking skills, the problem solving abilities. And then later on, as we get into the high school grades, it's really fostering uh, university um, uh, preparedness. Um, students are taking uh, university or college level courses and uh, preparing them as they move on to uh, their, their schools of choice. Um, one thing that's very unique within our network is we have a, uh, an exclusive partnership with Berkeley Global. So, um, you know, the uh, uh, University of California, Berkeley is one of the top uh, universities within the world, one of the top um, public universities and globally um, uh, very well respected. But they have partnered with uh, Basis International Schools to offer Berkeley credit courses uh, for, uh, for students at our, our school. So it's for students that are in the high school grades. Um, we do have the program across a few of our schools. We'll continue to expand across all of our campuses, including Chengdu, further down the road as we have more high school students as the school grows. What that then yields in terms of results is um, really great uh, results for the students. Um, over 95% of our graduates across the entire network have been accepted into top 50 universities. Um, over 75%, 77% there, have been accepted into top 30 universities. And some of those great universities have been accepted into include uh, universities like Boston, uh, Carnegie Mellon, Columbia, Cornell, Duke, uh, the Imperial College of London, uh, MIT, um, Princeton, Rice, Stanford, uh, UCLA, the University of Chicago, uh, Oxford, University of Toronto, and other great arts and design uh, schools like uh, Rhode Island School of Design. Uh, with that and some insights on the network, we do want to talk about uh, what it means to be a part of teaching at uh, Basis International and Bilingual Schools. And with that, uh, I'm going to welcome uh, Leila Oskui in, and uh, she will share some additional insights uh, about teaching and being a part of uh, the faculty at Basis International and Bilingual Schools. All right. Cool. Thanks, Tim. And uh, thanks again, Ryan, for sharing all that information. It's really exciting to actually see those teachers in, in real life that we had hired, you know, last year, and now they're really there, and uh, it's uh, it's been going really great for you guys. I'm excited to see um, where it continues to go, and it, it's, you know, and its growth and everything like that, so, um, so yeah, a little bit more about BASIS, international and bilingual schools. Um, what is it like to be a teacher in this environment? Um, it is an incredibly collaborative learning environment at BASIS. And what that means is there's really no limits to who, what, where, when, and how you can collaborate in BASIS within your grade level, within your subject, with the grades below and above to determine, you know, what, am I teaching what is appropriate for what they learned before and what they're going to learn next? And how can I incorporate what they're learning in art into my science in my science class and, and things like that is really important for students to make these connections, which is why uh, we do foster this incredible collab incredibly collaborative learning environment. Um, we do have a, an academic culture of high expectations that uh, is not only for the students, but for the teachers as well. Um, the students are in incredibly intellectual young adults 
Uh, so obviously the teachers need to have as high expectations for themselves to, to meet them and their needs. Um, incredibly highly uh, respected and growing group of schools in China with a broader global connection. We do have, like Tim said, um, a school in Bangkok as well as uh, private independent schools in the US. Uh, um, so it's really unique career opportunity in which you're part of this um, well-established network of international schools that also has incredibly incredible growth that we're seeing presently and in the future. Um, and my favorite part, of course, is the basis students. I could uh, tell you numerous stories about what I've seen the students producing and speaking about in class. And it's such a unique experience as an educator to be in a classroom where the students are genuinely interested and excited to be there. I mean, uh, Ryan mentioned that kid running out of the car into school every day, and I absolutely can see that happening. Um, and I'm sure there's students across other schools doing the same thing. So yeah, that's, that's uh, definitely my favorite part. Next, we will talk about um, why teaching in China. So there's a couple of reasons, uh, one of which, of course, is this convenient modern way of living. It's incredibly technological in China, as you can probably assume, but it goes even beyond what you probably know. For example, um, you can leave the house with just your phone and pretty much everything you need is on your phone. Everything is keyless and you know Wi-Fi everywhere. And it's, it's um, modern and technological in, in that uh, respect. Um, education is also very highly valued. Um, you know, I'm sure uh, I've had experiences in the US where, where we do have incredible students here, but it's, there's, there's some, some value sometimes that's missing in, in certain um, school environments, I'd say. But in China, it is it's just so respected and, and valued. When you come into school, the students are excited to learn and their parents value you and respect you as well, which is um, something that teachers always tell me they're, they're looking for, right? That's a question they always ask me, you know, how do they, what is communication with the parents like? Um, well, they do, they're, they're, they're excited that you're there just as much you're, as you're excited to be there. Um, it, experiencing a new culture, uh, again, I mean, there's, it goes without saying, China has thousands of years of history. Um, places like Chengdu, you'll see this, you know, modern cutting edge technology and um, historic China, you know, Chinese temples and you know, things like that everywhere. Um, food is obviously delicious and there's a variety of cuisine in China that we in America don't even realize that they actually do have there. Quite a unique um, cuisine in, in Chengdu as well that's uh, quite delicious over there. It's correct. Yeah, the uh, the hot pot is uh, that's one of the things Chengdu is famous for, and I've I've done that, and it's fantastic. You can do it spicy or not or not spicy. I like the spicy, and the the locals that I was with were very impressed that uh, you know that I, <laughs> I that I like the spice. So if you're one of those people that enjoy it, you'll you'll get your fill here it, in Chengdu. You'll make a friend or two over there for sure. <laughs> yes. Thank, thanks for clarifying. Um, and then, of course, an, an additional um, additional benefit, the cost of living in China is quite low. Now, if you pair that with the, um, the, the great salary and package of benefits that you get in China, it's the quality of life is insurmountable. Um, I, you know, uh, one of the feedback that we hear all the time in in with basis teachers is that quality of life for them is incredible. Um, they live with their whole families there in some cases as well, and they, they thoroughly enjoy um, that lifestyle, I'll say. All right, so we're going to talk about the um, expat package, just as we just mentioned. Um, okay, so a couple of things that we do provide for um, incoming faculty members. So we do provide airfare to China. Um, annual return home allowance. So every every summer after the school year is over uh, an allowance for returning home to visit your home family. Also, you know, travel as well that can be used. Um, visa support is something that I don't think we talk about enough. And it's 
it's really incredible. I know I, when I was you know, moving abroad, visa was a really stressful thing for me. And in basis, the HR team really takes great care of you, not just takes great care, but they're extremely knowledgeable and experts in what they do. So you're in really good hands with them. Uh, fully paid furnished housing as well. That's another thing about, you know, cost of living, quality of uh, life is your, your salary is your salary and you're not actually paying for your housing as well, which is a uh, for me in the United States, a big cost of what I pay every month. So um, I, I, it's a really great benefit for our teachers as well. Also uh, comfortable for if you, if you are coming with families too. Uh, um, again, housing allowance is optional and available in, the, in some cases. Global healthcare coverage. Uh, so not just local Chinese healthcare, but global healthcare, including if you're a US citizen. Um, for uh, returning home and having some uh, health care here in the U.S. or here for me, rather. Um, tuition, up to two children could um, enroll into basis free tuition. Meals at school, which I heard are fantastic, by the way. And you, so you can eat um, breakfast and lunch at the school for free. Uh, we also do have a 10% annual retirement benefit that you can put towards a retirement or savings of your choosing. Um, completion bonuses at the end of our contracts and opportunities for additional bonuses, school-wide and individual bonuses as well. So um, a really, really great package of benefits. And again, um, like I said, we do really cherish our teachers. So we do want to take care of you as, as a, a teacher who is then educating our incredible students as well. Next pa uh, page, please. Thank you. Um, a couple of requirements just to mention. Um, one of the things is we do require a degree in um, the, the subject or field that you will be teaching. What that means is for um, primary and early years teachers, that would be an, um, a degree in elementary education or le early learning, primary education, early childhood education and development, things like that. Now for um, other subjects like math, we are looking for um, a math related degree, physics for physics again, or engineering, uh, English language arts, literature for the subject that you will be teaching. Um, two full years of full-time lead teaching experience. Um, obviously, that's a, that's a preference for us because we prefer that you, you, you do have some kind of teaching experience, but actually it is a visa requirement more, more so than anything else. So two full years teaching experience. Um, of course, a passion for teaching. There's, there's no possible way that we'd have the incredible environment that we do have at uh, basis, including Chengdu without the passionate teachers that we do have. Um, willingness, again, as I mentioned, the collaboration that we have, you do need to be willing to and excited about collaborating with your peers. It's also an incredible learning opportunity for yourself to learn from these educators from around the world who um, are, are excellent as well and great people to learn from. Um, and again, elevating your, your teaching colleagues. Uh, high academic standards, again, uh, desire to make a difference in the academic level of uh, international education uh, basis. Willingness to work hard. I'm sure you can probably tell from this presentation that um, teachers are, pro are expected to meet these high standards and work hard. Our teachers work very, very hard and they're, um, they're, they're passionate about that as well, like I mentioned. Um, ability to gauge these young minds, they're incredible students, and of course some current visa restrictions um, as they come up, and, and we will advise you about those too. Um, a couple other uh, points about working for Basis International Schools. Um, our schools do have mostly local students. International side, it's um, predominantly Chinese, but maybe not as much as some of the other schools. They do have a population of students of other um, nationalities as well. So you'll have you'll have local Chinese that just happen to have a passport from overseas that, you know, perhaps they were born in the United States or Canada. There's also in Chengdu, there's a large population of expat that are Korean. And so we have Korean students that are on the international side as well. And then, yes, on the bilingual side, it's going to be predominantly the Chinese locals that just have the Chinese passport. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so yeah, with that in mind, um, uh, you, you know, if 
something to consider when you're bringing your children over to basis, if you are planning to bring your family over, is keeping in mind, making sure that they're they're comfortable with being in an environment where they're maybe not, they're not with a international students in an international school as far as multiple students from the United States, from England, from other European countries, Australia, you know, things like that. Meaning that English is going to be a lot of the students' second language. Um, so it's just something to consider. Um, Flexibility is important. Schools are newer. Chengdu is in its first year. So uh, they have the benefit of being part of a, a network that we're, we know what we're doing and we're really good at it. But it is a, it's its first year as a school. Um, so being flexible and um, patient is really important with that. Um, and then as I mentioned, accompanying students. So another thing to consider is making sure that that basis is the right fit for your kid as well, if you do plan to come and, and teach for a basis Chengdu. Um, it is a very rigorous curriculum. It has a quite high expectations. Um, and we, we would love for your children to join, but just um, something to consider and make sure it is right for your, your children and your family. All right, as I mentioned, um, you know, Chengdu is a new school. Uh, we do have a couple other new schools joining us and starting next school year. So they will take after Chengdu and learn from them, uh, obviously. And then the years to come after that, we have uh, new schools that will be added in major uh, cities in our network that we're really excited about. So something to, to look forward to. All right, um, and I am gonna turn it back over to um, Ryan and Tim, but for more insights, we do have a really, uh, really incredible um, social network, essentially. We have a career site where you can apply for jobs or learn more about basis. Um, we have a blog page where you, we have really cool insights about so many different facets. There's blogs specifically about Chengdu in there as well, but you can, anything you're looking for, you can probably find in the blogs. And if not there, maybe our YouTube channel is a video. And of course, if you want more information and you want to keep up to date, you can join our interest list and join us on social media and follow us and um, connect with us. Right. Well, thanks, Layla. Appreciate that. And uh, with that, we'll move on to uh, Q&A. So as we go through, again, if you've had any questions that have come up along the way, feel free to submit your questions through to, uh, to the Q&A. Um, one thing, you know, before we get to some of the questions, is just to, to mention, I mean, I, I, a couple of things I really loved about uh, Chengdu and uh, the Sichuan um, area, um, you know, Dr. Kelly, as you had mentioned, great outdoor activities. I mean, Chengdu kind of sits there. You've got the mountains that kind of sit in the background, easy access there. Um, you had mentioned, uh, you know, not too far away is, is one of the, 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 uh, the four great sacred Buddhist mountains in, uh, in all of China. So uh, Shan, um, beautiful hike that heads up there, uh, sits above the clouds, actually. So they have the uh, kind of the monastery that sits up on the top. And uh, you can look out over the top of the clouds at that time. So beautiful hike that goes up there and just some, some wonderful places throughout, um, throughout uh, uh, Chengdu and the broader Sichuan province. So really great place to be. Uh, for questions, um, Leila, if you want to maybe kind of run through some of the questions that we do have, um, I'll kind of turn that to you and then uh, we can answer questions. Sure. Um, uh, one question we have here is, what type of ELL support is available and what is the typical English ability of students? So it's a good question, Layla. So we have an ELL department in all of the basis schools. So that is something that we hire specifically for. So we have multiple ELL teachers that are on staff. The language, uh, the, the, the proficiency of English that I'm seeing at the Chengdu school is very high. Obviously, it varies from, you know, the, the younger students are still acquiring the language, but we'd set pretty high standards because having proficiency in English is very important because, as Tim has mentioned, this, this curriculum is accelerated. It is all in English. It's an American-based curriculum, so your level of proficiency has to be high, and that's what we've discovered here in Chengdu is that the, the students that are coming to our school 
are fantastic in that in that respect. And if there are areas they need to improve upon, we have the support available in the school for them to be successful. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, another question we had is, um, what other professional development opportunities can teachers get at basis? So from, I think from just the professional development of entering into a really top-notch curriculum and learning all about that, there's support that you can do from a variety of things from if you, you know, AP training, in-house professional development. Our particular school is really focused on instructional coaching and making sure that teachers are becoming the best they can be. Uh, my division heads are experts in this area, so they are really working with teachers on how do you best coach each other and how do you go into classrooms and observe and help that teacher continue to grow. We don't believe it's just the jobs of the division heads to do that. We believe that the chairs of departments are part of that as well. And also colleagues, you can learn a lot from the person next door to you, um, even if they're not in your particular discipline. So that is what we focus on. I had one teacher tell me that it was the first time, I think, in her career that a head of school had observed her class, and that in the past few months, she'd been observed more times than she had in her entire career. So from that standpoint, it's not a gotcha program that we're coming in to see what you're doing wrong. We're coming in because we want to see what the incredible things are occurring in the classroom, ways that we can help other teachers grow from that, and then also to help that particular teacher grow. So that's a big focus that we have. And obviously, there are other things too. If you have a particular interest, um, you know, if you're into social emotional learning, there's things that we can provide for you or point you in that direction. Those are just a few examples of that. And if you're looking to grow as far as in leadership, that is something I believe strongly in, the network uh, believes strongly in, that if you want to grow and you want to move into administration, um, those are pathways that we have available as well. If if I can just maybe add to some of that, um, you know, Dr. Kelly, you mentioned you the amount of time that uh, um, you know, the observations. One of the things that I've seen really play out is as uh, the administration and leadership of the school um, gets to know the teaching of the different teachers. Uh, sometimes there's a teacher that may have, uh, you know, be struggling with something and, and we know who in our school um, they could observe and learn from the most. And so it just creates this, this great community of, of, of peer, uh, peer to peer um, development and mentoring and you know, stuff as well. It's one thing I've just absolutely loved about the schools is the, uh, you know, the collaboration that goes on and um, leadership knowing um, who has what great skills and talents and abilities and strengths and uh, being able to broaden that out across the school. So we really love yep. that. Great. Um, we have a question here um, about when recruitment uh, will start, which is a great question. Um, I know I, I can answer that a little bit and maybe Ryan wants to add um, to what I say, but uh, we're started. <laughs> we're essentially, we're hiring. Now, the only difference is because the school just started, essentially, we, we don't have any, uh, that many teaching, teacher, teaching openings, teacher openings in Chengdu, except for maybe a few hiring needs that they've discovered along the way that we're, we're hiring, um, now essentially, but not too many for the reason that the, the school is already full, fully staffed. Um, but obviously looking for, for future opportunities as well as some of the current openings that you can see on our website. Uh, Ryan, anything you also wanted, you wanted to add to that? Yeah, you know, even though there there may not be a lot of openings for Chengdu currently, I, I if you're interested, I still think it's worth your time to speak with Layla, to reach out to the Bose group and just to get more information because the beauty of being part of a network is that if you were to join basis Chengdu, you fulfill your contract you could move to another basis school within china or back in the states or in bangkok thailand or wherever it may be so once you're part of it you really have an opportunity to be in that network and work at other schools so i would still encourage you to to reach out and to see what's available you never know things can sometimes change pretty rapidly on the international scene with, you know, openings and needs. So if you're interested, still apply. I would be, I'd welcome a conversation. Absolutely, 100%. Um, we have another question here 
Um, I see basis use as an AP curriculum. What about teachers that have experience in IV, British, or other types of curriculum? That's, you know, it's a good question. So my background is predominantly in the international baccalaureate. So what what that brings, though, to the basis is that you have just a different view on curriculum. So even though we're using the AP curriculum, if you've been in the British system, IB, uh, you know, any of the other different curriculums, it, you'll just be learning a different, uh, different take on, you know, the basis curriculum. So that is definitely not something that is going to, you know, hurt in your application. It's something I look for because I want people to have a wide breadth of experience in a variety of curriculums because you can bring the strength of those philosophies and educational practices to the basis network and then implement the basis curriculum. Perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Um, another question that we have here is about where did it go uh, can we provide some examples of what is taught in middle school to get an understanding of what the rigorous curriculum is like so i would i would say i'd even go down to elementary uh really the the acceleration is it, it, it a lot of it is centered on the mathematics so for instance a grade one student is going to be doing second and third grade math and then you know like for instance my son is in grade three is doing grade three four and five math so as you get to middle school in eighth grade you're entering into algebra and by the time you finish middle school so I'm, I'm sorry sixth grade you're starting algebra by the time you finish eighth grade you're either you're finishing algebra two pre-calculus moving right into calculus so to graduate from a basic school you have to complete ap calculus um a you know a b so it's something that needs to uh you know you need to be aware of that on the math side it's very it's 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 very rigorous in that respect and obviously from the standpoint of the humanities and language arts and and those aspects it's accelerated as well from the language standpoint of of things but you know it it's it's it, it's a great curriculum that prepares kids for university and to enter the top you know top schools around the world perfect i'm i'm going to even add a, a little bit more to that because i think it puts into perspective a, a, a little bit about what the students are doing in middle school versus what you typically see a student doing in high school. Um, so in sixth grade in basis, students begin taking not just you know middle school general science, but actually separate subjects with different teachers for chemistry, uh, another class for physics, another class for biology, and another class for algebra and um, up to you know geometry and things like that. And they're taking all these courses simultaneously, but in as separate subjects, and they take that sixth grade and also seventh grade and also eighth grade. So by the time they get to high school, they're very prepared for that AP course. It's not anything, it's not brand new information to them. It's then taking that information to another level where they can then critically think and apply they're learning in you know that AP test format. If you're familiar with these, you know, they have you know essays and things like that. So um, the, the, that's the kind of the the difference that I like to put into perspective for people so they understand that as a physics teacher, that you maybe you typically teach high school physics, you could very well be an, an incredible fit and find good value for yourself as a middle school physics teacher as well. Um, so it, just to you know think of it in that way as well. Layla, that I'm I'm glad you brought that up. That that you hit the nail on the head. The the sciences is a perfect example to to show the the rigor of the curriculum. I think another aspect too is, for instance, in eighth grade, all students are taking economics as well to prepare them for the AP economics that they'll see yes. in ninth grade. So if you're looking for a rigorous curriculum, so and I think your point of, yeah, you could be a great 11th grade, you know, physics teacher in the States or Canada or UK or wherever you're from and come to basis and you would be able to deliver that same curriculum in the middle school. And that's what I find just, you know, incredible about this particular curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. And the middle school students, they're, they're middle school age students. They, they're the same in China as it is in the US, as it is in England, as it is in whatever country, right? But basis students have this different level of maturity to them in that they you know they're also very excited to be there so it's it's a unique opportunity to teach middle school as well with with these basis students yeah just 
just that little piece as well. Um, I actually have a, my own question. Could you tell us a little bit about what the housing is like, uh, the provided housing is like for the teachers? Sure. Um, on campus, we have multiple, I mean, I can't even tell you the number of apartments we have on campus. Anything from one bedroom, two bedroom, up to three bedroom apartments that, that we'll have on campus. Fully furnished, gorgeous. Um, I will get you some pictures so you can provide those to candidates and, and put it on the website. We also have teachers that are living off campus and they're living about 15 minutes away and with the housing uh, allowance that they receive and the cost of living being so low in Chengdu, they're able to find three, four bedroom apartments that they just absolutely love. And it's, you know, within walking distance of a mall and other great things that they can get to. The school does provide a shuttle um, each morning for faculty that live off campus, and they also provide a sh two different shuttles in the afternoon for those that want to leave, you know, when school is done, and then those that want to stay a little bit longer and, and, you know, do their prep at at the campus. So if you're looking to live on or off campus, we have you covered here in Chengdu, and you will have a great, uh, a great place, a place to live, either for yourself or your spouse and, or your, your children as well. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I look forward to the, those photos. I'd be excited to, to share some of those photos because it really is beautiful housing um, in China, really. Um, uh, another question, I think we talked a lot about the academic rigor and the um, accelerated learning pace of the students. So I think this question um, is really great. What type of support do we have for students who are struggling with the curriculum? Oh, it's it's multifaceted. Um, it we really tailor it to the students' needs. So we have a variety of options. We can, you know, we can pull students out. We can provide support, you know, before school, after school. We can do a variety of different things. That it's something that we really we we really hone in on to start the year to make sure that a student isn't getting too far behind. And so the heads of divisions, the chairs of departments really work in collaboration to make sure that once the student's admitted, we want to keep them. We don't want to just admit kids and then that they they can't make it and they have to find another school. Once you're part of our community, we want to keep you here and we will do anything possible to support the kids. And that also comes from, you know, you know, talking with the family. If there's additional things they can do at home, we want to make sure they're doing that as well. So it, it's it's really multifaceted that we really try to make sure these students are successful. Great. Well, um, that's all the questions that I'm seeing now. Um, I'll just kind of turn it over back over to Tim. Great. Well, uh, Layla, Dr. Kelly, thank you so much for providing some great insights on uh, the schools, the opportunities with us. Um, as Layla had mentioned, you know, we are uh, actively uh, recruiting and hiring for positions um, in Chengdu, as well as uh, across the basis International Bilingual School Network. And um, I would highly encourage you to, uh, for those that are interested, uh, please feel free to submit an application and um, you know, be able to, to be considered for, for roles with us. Um, again, follow us uh, on our social channels. You'll be able to see a lot of insights. You'll be able to see some of the stories of the teachers. You'll see their experience, what they've been doing um, they, uh, on our blog. Uh, yeah, a lot of our teachers are, are, have shared some of their experiences about being in China, um, what they've done, uh, you know, getting there, living there, what has been pleasantly surprising. Uh, what they've enjoyed, and uh, you can see if that's something to be a fit for you. But uh, again, Dr. Kelly, uh, congratulations on a great opening of a new school and a beautiful, beautiful campus. Um, I think uh, many schools are a little bit jealous, and I look <laughs> forward to uh, continuing to see great things at the school. Thanks for your insights and uh, um, joining us today, and uh, we look forward to seeing some great candidates uh, come your way. Great. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Layla. Thank you, everyone who joined. Thank you.